All right, here we go. Next section, we're going to add, subtract uh, some rational expressions. Keep these going. Going to keep the music going, too. So in the first section, I, I showed you me and Drake, or Drake and I. Uh, second session, I saw we paired up Macklemore and Mr. Bean, some of our favorite artists. Uh, speaking of favorite artists, here's Sullivan. Sullivan is into K-pop. He's really into K-pop. Obviously, there is with BTS. You may not notice, uh, BTS actually stands for Big Head Tongue Out Sullivan. That's what BTS is, and there he is right there representing BTS. All right, let's get this going. Let's do some rational expressions, and it all starts with these numbers. So uh, rational numbers uh, are nice when I want to add or subtract them when they have a common denominator. So think old school. I want to add two fractions together, two-fifths plus one-fifth. They're really easy when they're all fifths. If they're all fifths, you just add them together, three-fifths. So we can add or subtract uh, fractions no problem when they have the same denominator. So they're evil. They're evil, not evil. They're equal parts. Uh, some people think fractions are evil, but these are equal parts. So if these are thirds, I'm going to do the same thing. What is this equal? Well, the, they're thirds. What kind of thirds? I'm doing something minus 5, so I'm going to leave it as something minus 5. We're going to have now an expression, x minus 5 over 3. So these denominators may look weird. They're kind of crazy, but 3y squared... Boom, it stays 3y squared, just like that 5 state of 5 over there. Add the tops, so we get 12. Pretty cool, huh? Uh, denominators can look at it crazy, but are they the same? Sure, these are the same denominator, so the bottom will stay the same. It's going to stay 3x times 2x plus 1. And then on top, I'm just going to say 9 minus 3, which is 6. Pretty cool. Are these common? Well, they don't look like it right now, but yes, they are, because y squared is a difference of squares. It's y plus 3, y minus 3. So these are... Uh, like denominators or common denominators. So really on bottom, you can write either way, y plus 3, y minus 3, or the y squared. And then on top, I'm going to go ahead and add, what do we got, 2y plus 5. So really, adding fractions with a common denominator is pretty awesome, or subtracting is pretty great. Unfortunately, they don't always have common denominators, or they have unlike denominators. So we're going to have to mix this up. So think about it when it wasn't a common denominator. So let's say we had that 2 fifths, and now we're going to add one third to it instead. Well, that's a bummer. They're not equal parts. So I got to tweak a little bit. So what do I got to do? I got to find a common denominator. So what do I do? Well, they both can be 15. So I could times this by, by 3. Whatever you do the bottom to a fraction, you got to do as a top to keep it equal. Over here, to make it 15, I times it by 5. But again, whatever you do the bottom, do it to the top. So really, I was looking at what? This is 6 fifteenths, if I rewrite it, plus uh, 5 fifteenths. Now they're 15 fifteenths. They're the same. I can add them together and say, what do I have here? I have 11 fifteenths. Pretty awesome. Can I do it with rational expressions? Sure thing. So here, same thing. I need that common denominator. 7, 3, what can they be? They can be 21. So whatever I got to times this by 3, whatever you do the bottom, do it to the top. Times this bad boy by 7, whatever you do the bottom, do it to the top. So I'm really looking at 3x over 21. And then what is that? Minus 5 times 7 is 35 over 21. Now I have that common denominator. Now I can subtract them, 3x minus 35. And then on bottom will be that 21. Pretty crazy, huh? Gets even crazier. What about when the x is in the bottom? So these are rational expressions, not numbers. We did the numbers. These are expressions. Well, what's the common denominator? you got to make them the same. And I like to think about it as like, what are they missing? So this is x, this is 3. What's this x missing? Well, he's missing a 3. So I'm going to times this by 3. Again, where you do the bottom, do it to the top. This guy's missing an x, so times it by x, whatever you do the bottom, do it to the top. So 3 times 4 will give me 12 over 3x minus, what is this, 5x over 3x. So now they're the same on bottom. So I know that common denominator is this, and now I'm going to subtract them 12 minus 5x, 12 minus 5x. Pretty cool, huh? All right, so it's kind of different every single time. So if I look at these bad boys, 3y squared and 9y, definitely not the same. So can I turn this 3 into 9? Sure. I look at the number part and say, what's the common denominator? It's 9. So he needs to be times by 3, which is cool. What is this guy missing? Well, he's got y squared. He's just a plain old y, so I need to times him by y. So my goal is to make what? 9y squared. So you can make these other things. Like I could have made this instead of 15. I could have made the common denominator 30. It would have just been way bigger. Uh, in this case, I'm going to make it the smallest one possible. So what do I have on bottom here? I have 9y squared on bottom. Up top, 3 times 7, 21, minus 9yy is that 9y squared, so I know I'm good, and that's 5y. Again, you could have made this uh, 18y to the fourth or something weird, but it just keep, it's way easier if you keep it the smallest one possible. 
So now I know the bottom, uh, the denominator here is 9y squared, 21 minus 5y, and I'm good to go. Awesome. So yeah, these can look crazy. So this is a 3x. Here's an x minus 4. When I have these things, I think of them as whole quantities. So what is he missing? Well, he's missing a 3x. So I do this. What is this guy missing? He's missing an x minus 4. Now they're a common denominator. So I'm just going to put what they're missing. Again, whatever you do to the bottom, do it to the top. So I need that 3x up there. I need the x minus 4. That keeps everybody equal. And so on top here, I'm looking at what? Uh, 27x, 3x times 9 is 27x. On bottom is that crazy denominator right there. And then on top, ooh, what I got to do here? I got to distribute. So I'm going to say this is really 3x minus 12 on top. And on bottom is your 3x, x minus 4. So it gets kind of crazy here. So uh, when I go, I know the denominator is going to be the 3x. And you can distribute that out if you want, but I'm going to leave them all factored. So I'm going to have this bad boy here. And now I have to combine like terms. It's 27x plus this. So 27x plus 3x, boom, 30x. And then you get that minus 12. Uh, that's your final answer there. Pretty cool, huh? So we're going to get common denominators for these rational expressions. Then we can add or subtract them. Let's give it a whirl here. So I got three examples. I'm going to let you try some. So if I'm looking at this, again, I'm, I'm going to factor it. So ooh, I kind of used this one earlier. Y squared minus 9 is definitely Y plus 3, Y minus 3. So when I look at this bad boy and I look over here, what's he missing? Well, there's that 4 there. So I need to add a 4. So let me change the color here. I need to get this 4 out here. Whatever you do, the bottom do to the top. If I look over here, I've got a Y minus 3 and a 4. I've got that, but he's got a Y plus 3. So I need to take this Y plus 3. And I'm going to leave you a lot of room. Don't freak out. You may have grabbed this packet and be like, holy cow, Mr. Bruss, this is a really long packet. I just gave you lots of space because these take up some space. So this whole big fat denominator is y plus 3, y minus 3. Boom. On top, what do we got here? Well, we got 4 times 2y is 8y. Now be super careful here with subtractions. I'm subtracting what? I'm going to go ahead and distribute this, but you have to be careful. You're subtracting all of this. So you're subtracting. You have to put it in a bracket or parentheses, something that lets you know the whole thing. So this will be 5 times y is 5y. Five, 5 times 3 is 15. But I'm subtracting that whole quantity that everybody's getting subtracted. Biggest mistake right here. This is where all the issues come up. i got to subtract that whole quantity. So what does that mean? Well, really on top, I've got 8y. Now i got to distribute the negative to these bad boys. So it's going to be minus 5y minus 15 all over that monster denominator right there. And... Can I clean this up a little bit? Sure. 8y minus 5y, 3y, and I got that minus 15. And then on bottom, boom, there it is one last time, the big denominator right there. Boom, there it is. Woo! That's subtraction. Subtraction is a hard one. That's why I put two in a row here. It's so tricky. Uh, let's do the next one. So again, luckily we got our factoring skills are pretty awesome at this point. Uh, pull up the greatest common factor. This is really 2x minus 1 going to factor this bad boy here. Hopefully it factors what multiplies the 3 as the 4. It looks like x minus 3x minus 1. And now once I have it factored, I say, okay, what's missing here? Well, this is 2 times x minus 1. It needs an x minus 3. So over here, I'm going to say, hey, let's just add an x minus 3. What do you do? Oh, gosh. Holy cow, this one's going to be a monster. It's quite the example here. Uh, it's missing the x minus 3. Over here, x minus 3, x minus 1, but it's missing that 2. So I'm going to times it by 2. I like that. Times by two is so much easier. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna work down on this one. Let's go down here. Why am I doing that? Well, this is the whole quantity. These things are the whole top of the fraction. So on this side, what do I have to do? I have to double distribute. I have to or foil this. Some people foil. I have to say it's going to be x times x is x squared. Then I go x times that two is plus two x. So I'm doing the double distribute. Then I'm gonna say negative three times x is negative three x. And then negative 3 times 2 is minus 6. That's just the left side. Now I'm going to minus, and whenever I minus, give yourself a bracket or another parentheses, whatever you like. I have to go ahead and say I'm minusing this whole thing. So now I have to 2 times all this. You're distributing the 2, so I've got a negative 4x minus 2. So whatever you can do to kind of keep your sign straight, make sure you're, uh, everything's working there because it's real easy to get one of those negatives messed up. All right, on bottom, I see a 2, x minus 3, x minus 1. There's the whole denominator. Can I clean this up? Sure. Let's clean this up right now. What do I got to do? I have to distribute that negative 
Oh my goodness, I'm gonna kinda go up here if that's okay, cause I have more room. So that whole top part is this x squared, plus two x minus three x, let's combine that. That's minus one x, minus six. Now I distribute that negative, so that's cool. So this becomes plus four x, and it becomes plus two. So you gotta be careful with that. That whole denominator is there. So I'm just gonna rewrite that as fast as I possibly can. Boom, there it is. And then one final step here is let's combine the like terms. Uh, x squared doesn't have any like terms, so down here I'm gonna say, oh yeah, x squared. Minus x plus four x, boom, plus three x. Minus six plus two is a minus four. And then on bottom, uh, we got that whole two times x minus three, x minus one. That was a lot of work. That's really as hard as it can ever get right there. If that made sense to you, if you feel good about that, that's cool, you're good to go. If not, we're gonna practice it and you're gonna you're gonna love these by the end. <laughs> maybe not love them, maybe just not dislike them, I don't know. Oh, one more example, let me give you one more example I want you to try some. What happens if uh, the second one's not a fraction? Well, remember everything is a fraction, it's just over one, so don't freak out. This is the same old, same old, the denominator's one, uh, it's just like if I had like one fifth plus two. You can still do this. It's two and a fifth. Ha, that's a pretty easy one. But you can get the common denominator and then times it by five and you can get your fifths over there. Same thing here. I'm going to get the common denominator. And what am I going to do? He's missing x plus two. So I'm going to times it by x plus two. Whatever you do to the bottom, you got to do it to the top. So he's missing a one. You, you can times it by one if you really want, but it's not going to change anything. So over here, I've got x plus one over x plus two. Uh, what am I gonna add to it? Again, that's one of these distributes. You've got, if you wanna write it out, you can, but I'm gonna have to distribute or foil all this stuff. So double distribute this. You end up with what? Three x squared. Three x times that two x is six x. And then we got the negative one. So we got negative one times x is negative x. Negative one times that two, negative two. All on bottom is the x plus two. Now addition's super cool. I don't have to be as careful with brackets and all that stuff because I'm not changing any of the signs. So you can write it with a bracket. It doesn't really matter, but uh, addition is is pretty nice, pretty legit. Uh, let's add like terms here. It's the whole top here. So uh, I've got that three x squared. He doesn't have anybody that's like him. We'll just put him over there. And then I've got an x plus six x is seven x minus an x uh, is back down to six x. So we're plus to six x. And the one plus one minus two is that right there. So there is the final answer there. So if it's not a fraction, just give yourself a common denominator. You are good to go. That is it. I can't say it enough about that subtraction and being really careful about putting the bracket in there uh, so you know you're subtracting the whole quantity. Here are four for you to really try. Don't just write them down. Really try it. Pause it. See how it goes. I'm going to flash up the uh, work shown and the answer so you can grade yourself. Hopefully you get these four right. All right, here are the answers right here. You can check them out. I boxed them in green. First one turned out to be the hardest one. Holy cow, that thing's kind of a beast. Make sure you get that bracket with that negative. That's the trickiest part right there. If that worked out, uh, number two is a great one with the common denominator there. Hopefully these all worked out for you. That's the entire video. I'm going to rock out with some K-pop here to end it. Mr. Sullivan's favorite, BTS. Good luck on the match check. Peace out.